We're standing here in the crypt of the church of the Samaritan woman at Jacob's Well, or also known as the Church of St. Photina, the Greek name for the woman, the Samaritan woman. And uh, right in the heart of the crypt is the well itself. But above the crypt is a beautiful, large basilica, which has been uh, built and painted now over the last 30, 40 years. But there have been churches here on this side of the well uh, since the 4th century. In fact, there is reference to this well, Jacob's well, even earlier than that in some of the earliest pilgrim accounts from the 3rd century. And the well is just a short distance away from uh, Tel Balata, the archaeological remains of Shechem. So this place is steeped in biblical history, both Old and New Testaments. And when pilgrims come down the steep steps behind, down into this crypt, to be at this well, there is a sense of our history coming together and us being able almost to touch the passage of time. This well is uh, thought to be the very same well that Jesus met the Samaritan woman. It, it, we know it is an ancient well uh, and could well have been that very same watering hole uh, that Jesus made this incredible encounter which is recorded in John's Gospel may indeed also be Jacob's well because of its proximity to Shechem. It goes down now about 40 metres so if you drop, drop a cup of water down into the well it takes nearly nine seconds before you hear the water dropped, hit the water below. But in older times, it was even deeper than 40 metres. And wells are very important. All water sources, fresh, good water sources, are very important in places uh, like this in a very hot climate. And Jesus came to this place and met uh, unexpectedly the woman and the encounter that they have, the dialogue that they have is so full of theological uh, depth that it merits deep analysis. The woman says to Jesus, do you think you are greater than our ancestor Jacob? Making reference to in Biblical times, New Testament times, the previous history. And this church uh, has been rebuilt uh, over many, many centuries. Built, knocked down, and built again. And this current building dates uh, was completed in 2007. And the Greek Orthodox priest, uh, Father Justinus, uh, has made it his life's work to rebuild it, and then to paint it covered with icons all over the basilica. There are dozens and dozens, sometimes huge icons, giving an account of Jesus' life. And here in this crypt is one of his, behind the well, on the wall, showing that encounter of Jesus with Saint Fotina. And a close look to read the icon reveals all sorts of rich meanings. In icon reading, hand gestures, eyes, where the eyes are looking are very important, full of symbolism. And in this painting, the background, the two mountains, and that which is built on the top of the mountain, all full of meaning. 
But the very spiritual heart of that encounter is Jesus' invitation for the woman to receive living water. Living water was moving water, fresh water, not water from a well, but water in a stream or water from a spring, which was even more valuable than uh, the well uh, water that you would find here. And that's why the Samaritan woman said, oh, so you're offering something even better than Jacob's water. Are you greater than him? Well, Jesus was saying, I am offering you something even more important than fresh moving water. I am offering you the water of life. Those who drink of the water that I give will never thirst. So it's an intimation to us that Jesus Christ offers to us as Christians the spiritual water of life itself. And in Lent, we are invited to drink of that water, to drink deeply, so that our souls are refreshed and those parts of us which have dried up become refreshed, renewed with new life. It's an invitation to go back to the very heart of faith, uh, our love of Jesus Christ, our understanding of him. But the story of the Samaritan woman reminds us that it is not simply an internal spiritual refreshment, but it is a challenge for our lives to be transformed so that we see the world differently. As Jesus taught his disciples uh, out of this story and many others, to see women differently, not in the restricted and confined ways uh, that was the old way. And not to see Samaritans, foreigners, uh, those who were considered inferior in the way they were seen. So a total transformation of social attitudes, the renewal and transformation of our world. So as we stop for a moment beside this ancient well, we are reminded of the deep and rich history of our faith, connecting peoples and generations and times. And we are invited to drink of this well. But here in this church, we are reminded that the protection and the valuing of places of great spiritual and historical significance is a gift to us as pilgrims. For without the life's work of Father Justinus, without the work of uh, Christian communities in this locality over many generations, this place would have been lost and this story and the richness that we have by being here would not be open to us. So we can be grateful for all those who have gone before us that enable us to come as pilgrims or here simply in this firm to be reminded by the vision of this well that Jesus is the very source of our life. When we know him as our saviour, our life is refreshed, renewed and brought close to God.